It's been another fascinating, and if you're an oil executive, somewhat alarming week in the oil markets. Uh, the price of Brent and WTI, its US counterpart, is down by more than 10%. I'm here to discuss with me what's been happening in the market and look at some of the data that's come out, such as the latest report from the International Energy Agency is Anjali Ravel, the FT's oil and gas correspondent. So Anjali, we've had this big fall this week. Can you just perhaps try and help us make, make sense of it? What's actually gone on? What's driven the price down so much in, in seven days? There's been a string of uh, data releases and also uh, company announcements that have really just fed into this sentiment, uh, this bearish sentiment. Um, earlier on this week, we had a report from OPEC, the oil producers cartel, and today we've had the IEA monthly oil report. Both of those really fed into this message that demand growth is going to be weak next year. Uh, there is going to be a, 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 you know, a supply overhang and there are concerns as to sort of when this when demand will pick up okay so that's quite interesting in spite of the fact we've got an oil price that's now down what almost 50 percent from its june highs two of the leading forecasters out there and and the iea today is saying that's not going to improve you know demand for oil even though the price is 50 percent lower i mean why is that? that that seems slightly odd Antoine Half, who is the author of the report, uh, told the FT this morning that th there are a number of factors at play here. You know, there is a, you know, there is a stronger dollar right now. There is a, a lot of countries are, are you know, pulling back on subsidies. Um, and also, let's, let's remember that it was weak demand in the first place that has caused the price to, to fall. Um, big exporter countries such as Russia are likely to, to pull back on demand as well. And you know, aside from the US, we have an issue with wage growth, uh, consumption, um, and all of this in the context of also d deflation being a big problem too. Um, all of this together is, is not helping the demand picture at all. Okay, so demand forecasts are being revised uh, lower. Um, at the same time, as you mentioned, we've got this supply growth coming from North America. And the stance really from, you know, the leading members of OPEC, Saudi Arabia in particular, seems to be, we're not going to do anything about this. We're just going to let the, the market decide what the price is. Ali Al Naimi, the uh, the oil minister for Saudi Arabia, which is the OPEC cartel's uh, biggest producer and also its leader, um, said said this week and sort of just reinforced this message that you know why should we cut? Why should we be the ones that cut? Um, and again, this was all part of the news flow that came out this week, and it just fed into this this bearish sentiment um, and really really just fed into uh, the price falling lower and lower. Okay, so are we seeing any reaction then from the oil and gas? explorers, companies, are we saying, uh, are we hearing from them that they're responding to this lower price by I don't know, cutting jobs, cutting capital expenditure, uh, mothballing projects? What are we hearing from, from, those, from those guys at the moment? Uh, a couple of the oil market analysts I spoke to this week said they're actually having to become you know, equity analysts as well. We've seen, we've seen BP, ConocoPhillips, uh, put out some statements this week about uh, you know, cutting costs and, and restructuring. Um, and you can see what's happened to the oil and gas equities index, which this week is down by 5% alone. Um, and it looks like the next earnings season is going to be a complete bloodbath. Let's remember that, um, you know, return on equity has, has had been falling anyway. And that was with an oil price that was much higher than $100 a barrel. And now with prices a lot lower, um, we're just going to wait and see. And it looks like it's going to be sort of bad news. I mean, I guess one question that I have is, OK, we're seeing some of those cuts, some of those announcements coming through. How long will that take like, to sort of feed through into lower production or, you know, some of this supply coming off the market? I mean, what are the estimates there? The, the projects that I've already started have had, you know, the financing allocated and it looks like they, they will carry on. The question now is, uh, when will these international oil majors pull back on, on the new projects, the, one, the ones that they're going to be making decisions about in, in the next few months uh, for 2016, 2017. Um, and it looks like it will be some time yet before all of those uh, investment cuts sort of feed through. Um, but it doesn't look like there's going to be a pullback in production in, let's say, uh, the next few months, which is what the IEA also stated in this morning's report. Angeli, thanks very much. So a uh, pretty bleak picture there. Uh, demand seems to be weakening. Supply is showing no signs of slowing down at the moment, despite some of the announcements we've seen from oil companies. So it could be that further oil price weakness is in prospect.